Hi everyone, I'm Caitlin James from Scalp Micropigmentation Australia and welcome to another five minutes fast facts on Scalp Micropigmentation Pro Artist Series where we're interviewing some amazing scalp micropigmentation artists from around the world and getting to getting their tips and tricks on how you can get the most out of your scalp micropigmentation transformation. So today's guest um, is located in Belford, Belfast in Ireland and we he's a lovely lad, super knowledgeable with over 10 years experience in the hair loss and alopecia industry. Um, he's become a winning rising star category winner for the Team Micro Awards in 2019. Um, he was the best newcomer in the World Scalp Micropigmentation Awards in Orlando, Florida in 2019 as well. Um, so that means that he was really well recognized by his peers in our industry here um, as being an exceptionally talented SMP provider and artist that's um, got less than two years experience in the industry. He was also a finalist for the UK Company of the Year and UK Permanent Makeup Awards. Um, he also won third place for Best Newcomer in the MP UK Awards, um, only having been in the industry um, back then only six months. Um, he won the Best UK Artist 2019 Teresa Wild PMU Scalp Micropigmentation Conference. He's trained under the talented Ollie Hughes and Michael Kumis, who, um, which means, you know, of course, that's why he's got exceptionally amazing skills, because um, they're both both very two very talented artists themselves. He owns a hair transplant company um, and today we'll be discussing combining scalp micropigmentation and hair transplant. Um, today we are talking with the very knowledgeable Marks, um, Mark Smith from Dot Micro. So that was a huge intro, lots of awards. Yes. <laughs> that was such a mouthful. I didn't think there was so much to say about me, Kitlin, to be honest. I know. <laughs> You made it so good. Stop winning so many awards then. <laughs> Brilliant. All right. Well, welcome. Um, so okay. let's, let's find out a little bit more about you. So how did you come to enter the scalp micropigmentation industry and what were you doing sort of pre previous to um, sort of hair loss? Uh, in short, I back in 2011, I'd lost quite a bit of hair by then. I was about 35 years of age and uh, was deciding to have a hair transplant and uh, find an international uh, company that I wanted to get the procedure done with. I worked a little day with them. I was a graphic designer at the time. And so uh, we, we sparked a bit, a bit of a relationship where I would do a lot of their advertising and branding. And in mm -hmm. return, they'd get me back this uh, wonderful head of hair. And, uh, and since then, that's sort of where the sort of relationship grew. So that's how I got into the industry. And that's how I learned a lot about, you know, what a hair transplant is and how it's done. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, that took me on to consultations with clients and actually speaking to people about hair transplants. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, that kind of uh, got me into think, looking at other things that are, that are uh, useful as a, as a sort of solution for hair loss. And that's where I started to see micropigmentation as a possible uh, possible uh, route to take. Yeah, brilliant. Um, so why did you decide to add SMP sort of into your hair loss company? Um, you know, they, they complement each other quite well. Um, were you quite keen to learn something more hands-on? So what, what made you sort of feel like you wanted to start in the SMP side of things? So I guess there was a... The, uh, Back, I think it was 2016, a gentleman had come in to see me with a, a really bad SMP result. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was asking, that could, you know, could, could I fix it? And I did, obviously, I wasn't able to. Uh, it was too low for a hair transplant, so unfortunately, and sadly, I had to send that gentleman on his way. And so it got me thinking about it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually then I researched it uh, for, and thought about it for a, quite a long time, to be fair. And then finally trained uh, to, to actually do the, do the treatment. And, uh, you know, we're looking at some of the, the sort of experts in the industry like yourself and some others. You were able to see how good it is in combination uh, with uh, hair transplant work. And yeah. the more you kind of look at it and the more you kind of investigate it, you can see how, how much they complement one another. Yeah, brilliant. Um, and your SMP is really taking off um, there where you are and um, so much so that you're sort of letting go a little bit of the hair transplant side of things. So that's really positive that um, the SMP is going so well and you're clearly so talented as well. So congratulations. Thank you. 
Um, so why, so for someone who's not overly familiar with scalp micropigmentation, how can scalp micropigmentation help someone with a transplant? So uh, typically what I would say is a gentleman who's maybe been uh, abroad for a hair transplant or local for a hair transplant, but the problem with a, a, a regular hair transplant is that they can only place, manually place hair so close together, uh, they can't replicate pre, what they call pre-loss density. And so uh, a lot of folks uh, would go back for a second or third hair transplant to try and uh, get that density and that, that's not always possible. So uh, one way and one really good way of adding that density very quickly is with micropigmentation and it's extremely effective. Yeah. So why do you feel more guys are sort of steering now towards doing scalp micropigmentation versus more, more surgery um, with hair transplant? It seems to be this trend that maybe the guys aren't going back for more. Why do you feel they're choosing scalp micropigmentation over further surgery? Uh, I've got, well, there's a number of guys that would come into my clinic who simply just prefer shaving their head already. So they can't see the value in going for a hair transplant. So that, mm -hmm. that's probably one, one reason. Um, another reason is, uh, I think just because they, uh, the immediacy of it, you know, you can have an immediate result with micropigmentation, whereas uh, there's a lot of downtime, there's a lot of waiting around, a lot of uncertainty with a hair transplant. Whereas with micropigmentation, we can create what, what we would uh, consider a perfect density very quickly with micropigmentation. Um, and, and, and so it's very attractive to, to folks to have that immediate result, I think. Yeah, yeah. And there's always the case that the guys sometimes don't have enough donor hair to go further um, on to having another yeah. transplant, which is another uh, key factor. Sometimes, yeah. um, is, you know, that they want to reserve their donor hair in case, you know, um, hair transplants progress um, or cloning progresses, things like that, um, that they want to reserve the donor hair. So SMP is a really good in-between option where we can add density between the transplants to give a fuller effect quite quickly um, without having to go through um, you know, the need for further surgery and, and moving further hair as well. Um, so let's talk about the two different types of the harvesting that um, can be um, performed with transplants. So just go through the two different types of scarring that, um, that you'll get from having a transplant and how SMP can help. Yeah, so uh, I suppose the, the, uh, the more kind of traditional uh, type of scar you would have got with a hair transplant would have been a linear scar from a FUT mm -hmm. or strip uh, procedure whereby uh, the, the patient uh, would have a, a, a linear uh, scar running right across the back of the, of the scalp and mm -hmm. even sometimes around onto the sides of the scalp. And those can be different shapes from very fine pencil uh, width scars to something that looks very uh, pretty dramatic and pretty horrendous to be honest and yeah. um, the second type would be what we call FUE or follicular unit extraction scars mm -hmm. these tiny little punches are used to uh, extract individual follicular units yeah. and so when they're extracted and, um, and they heal they look like little white dots um, across the donor area across the back of the head or around the sides so uh, guys who maybe like to shave quite neat uh, around the sides and back, these scars can then become uh, you know, exposed and that's where we can help. Yeah, definitely. I feel like there's this trend where they, the guys are sort of having that more fade done with the longer hair on top so that they can still wear all the hair that they had transplanted um, you know, and, and really sort of wear that proudly and maybe putting some density in between that to make that thicker and fuller, but then hiding all those scars as well so all the tiny little dot scars um with the smp you know really puts the icing on the cake there so that they can wear it nice and short and not reveal um that they've had a smp um so uh, fue so tell us a little bit more about um, what someone who's had fue can expect from getting some coverage and, and camouflaging out the fue scarring what would the normal process be um, so usually if someone comes in, uh, depending on the, the, uh, the sort of uh, the amount of scarring that they have, you know, we can get quite a nice result in one or two sessions or sometimes if it's a bit more extreme or more of a difficult case, maybe the skin's quite difficult, you might need three or four sessions to complete that treatment. But, um, but they can expect what looks like a nice full uh, shaved uh, sides and back donor area, uh, which is lovely because 
uh, you know, a lot of guys are very self-conscious, more self-conscious about losing the hair on top um, than, you know, in the scar. Yeah, and I think I'm seeing um, certainly here in Australia, a lot of guys travelling overseas for transplants. Sometimes we have the issues of over-harvesting as well when they do mega cases, um, you know, of, of when they've harvested over 5,000 from the back area. Yeah, yeah. So um, giving comfort to, to those guys that have had huge amounts of hair taken from the back and maybe some areas are taken unevenly as well, we can help yeah. correct all of that and make it all just look like a shaven um, basket of hair which is just as important as well as you know that the hair on the front there so hiding um, any signs of a transplant is um, is what we can also help with yeah and it's very effective yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for being, um, thank you so much, Mark, for being a part of our five minute fast facts and scalp micropigmentation pro artist series talk today. Um, hopefully someone out there that's had a hair transplant that's looking into doing some sort of density work or scar camouflage has learned something from our little conversation. So thank you so much. Thanks. No worries. For no problem. Um, yeah. Good to see you too from yeah. over the other side of the world. Um, yeah. All right, everyone. So if um, if you've got any qu comments or questions, make sure you pop them in the comments below. Um, as always, we want to hear from you. So pick up the phone or email us. Um, and we'd love to talk with you. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well to make sure you stay up to date and um, see any updates on new content that we release. Um, so thanks, everyone, for watching. And as always, we hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye.